Hello and welcome to another review of the talents and, spe and spells of the Legion pre-patch now featuring the Fury Warrior so uh, I never played Fury before never 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 and uh, this is a first to me so um, let's check its spellbook and see what it says uh, about it right uh, so first we have Battle Cry. Uh, it grants 100% uh, increased critical strike chance for five seconds. Uh, this is the same as the, as the Arms Warrior. Execute uh, can only be used uh, on enemies that have less than 20% health and deals 48,000 physical damage. So a lot of damage. We have Berserker Rage. Uh, it goes berserk, removing and granting immunity to fear, sap, and incapacitate effects such as fear. Uh, blind uh, and sap. I, I believe sap is the sap. It's only one. Oh, there's the the sap from the the monks as well. Then we have fury slash. Uh, it has it has no no resource consumption, no nothing, no cooldown. So you just strike uh, with your off offhand weapon for nine thousand damage and increases your bloodthirst critical strike chance by 15% until it next deals a critical strike. So, okay. And then we have blood, blood, Bloodthirst, which has a 4 second cooldown, and assaults the target in a Bloodthirsty Grace, dealing 16,000 damage, physical damage, and restoring 4% of... I'm sorry, 4% of your health, and generates 10 rage. Okay. So then we have Heroic Whip, which was updated so that you cannot go, so that the cursors cannot go up ahead of the maximum of its range. Um, we have Charge, which uh, charges to an enemy and generates now uh, 20 rage, uh, as it was, uh, if as if it was glyphed um, uh, like before, like on Warlords. Now the glyphs are removed and some were integrated uh, within the, the main spells. Then we have Commanding Shout, which increases 50% of your maximum health for 10 seconds. This is... Uh, commanding Shout was before the, stam the stamina buff. Now it has the effect of the former Rowing Cry, which is now um, deleted, was now deleted. Then we have Intimidating Shout, uh, uh, causes the target and up to 5 additional enemies to flee with, uh, within 10 yards to, to flee in fear. We have Enraged Regeneration, which is the, a defensive cooldown, and it, it reduces the damage taken by 30%, and Bloodthirst redu um, restores an additional 20% health, so it, uh, normally it restores 4%, with Enraged Regeneration it... Re it um, Increase it restores 20% uh, of additional health. Usable while stunned lasts 8 seconds and uh, bloodthirst as 4 seconds and so you you won't be able to use uh, bloodthirst a second time while enraged rege while enraged regeneration is up. Uh, piercing how uh, snares all enemies within 15 yards, reducing their movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. This was a talent before, now it's a, a spell for the Fury Warrior uh, only, I believe. And it replaces Armstring. Uh, Armstring is a single uh, slow, Piercing Owl is a AoE slow. And then we have Pummel, the Interrupt, Raging Blow, a mighty blow with both weapons that deals a total of 15,000 physical damage, only usable while enraged. It, it has no cost. Uh, then we have Rampage, which needs 85 uh, rage, enrages you and unleashes a series of 5 brutal strikes over 2 seconds for a total of 37,000 damage. Then we have Taunt, we have Whirlwind, which does not consume any uh, rage, it, you can spam it, as you can see. Then we have Rain Rage, which is a passive. Both first critical strikes will enrage you, increasing your attack speed by 100% and the damage you take 
by 30% for 4 seconds. Then we have Mastery, increases damage done while aim raised by 27% and Titan's Grip which allows the Fury Warrior to dual wield a pair of 200 we weapons and increases its, its maximum health by 50%. So basically the core rotation of this would be uh, spam your Fury Slash to increase the critical, strike the critical strike chance of your next Bloodthirst and then it will enrage you and you can use a Raging Ball while enraged and repeat the process until you earn enough rage to, to use uh, Overpower there you go just you keep using that while enraged and then enraged again and then you continue just like this on the, as the, it, it is the same it's not very hard the, the single the sim, the um, untalented uh, rotation so now looking at the talents what do we have we have war machine uh, killing a target grants you 30% haste and 30% movement speed for 10 seconds this is to me a leveling, a leveling talent, uh, I don't know, killing a target, uh, leveling talent, uh, and a uh, PvE encounter where you have, um, where you have ads to kill, and when you kill them, you earn the, that that taste and that thirty and that movement speed, which is a lot, uh, for ten seconds, or even on PvP mostly on the battlegrounds not rated not rated battlegrounds this is this is not a viable talent at all i don't know uh, that's my opinion uh, but i'm not seeing the use of it on single target pve encounters nor uh, arenas or or um, rated battlegrounds because when you kill uh, rated battlegrounds i could see this one but not really uh, on arenas that's definitely a no because on arenas once you kill one one enemy you want you the the match is probably uh won by by that moment so there's no point for for arenas uh, at least then we have endless rage your auto attack regenerates generates 30 percent additional rage you can see that the the fury warrior does not generate rage as much as the as the arms warrior um so this could be uh oh and bloodthirst on the last on the last talent from the first time we have bloodthirst has a 40 percent increased critical strike chance against targets above 80 percent health let's just see endless rage and see and see what uh, oh that's good that's a that's a nice nice rage there I believe right taste for blood, taste for blood, taste for blood must stack this and then um, endless rage could be best used on in PvE and then fresh meat would um, would be the best for PvP because it targets above 80% health and 40% increased critical strike chance to proc your uh, your uh, your enrages and uh, dealing your uh, raging balls so uh, without a cost so endless rage PvE fresh meat PvP not not seeing here a uh, a use a fitting use for war machine besides leveling or on our battlegrounds to be honest and encounters where you have multiple ads of course so here we have the the cc tire talent uh, shockwave causes a shockwave to oh, see it causes a shockwave that stuns uh, the targets uh, afflicted for four seconds Cooldown reduced by 20 seconds if it strikes at least 3 targets. Then you have Stormbolt, holds a weapon at an enemy, causing 5000 physical damage and stunning them over uh, 4 seconds of stunning the enemy. Uh, it has a 20 yard range, 30 second cooldown. To me, this is the best choice for PvP. 
uh, arenas and even battlegrounds uh, because you can you can stun, you stun the healer, you stun the ranger that 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 are uh, running away. And then we have double time, which increases the maximum number of charges on charge by one and reduces its cooldown by three. And this, to me, is the best PVE talent because charge now generates rage, 20 rage, and uh, it it allows you to have uh, better mobility. So to me, this this one is the the best the best talent for PVE. Stormbolt PVP and Shockwave. Uh, perhaps on battlegrounds, on rated battlegrounds, where you have a lot of a lot of melees, you get you get to strike at least three targets, reducing the cooldown by 20 seconds. That that's very good. Otherwise, stormbolt and double time for PV, or you can even uh, choose shockwave if there are multiple ads that need to be CC to be knocked down more easily. So you you have some choices here. Then we have Wrecking Ball. Your attacks have a chance to make your next Whirlwind to deal 200% uh, increased damage. And this is uh, very good for AoE, no doubt about it. And But only because Whirlwind causes your next Bloodthirst or Rampage to strike up to 4 additional targets for 50% of your damage of the damage so what it does is we are here we proc this one oh there it is your next world first see and then oh okay uh, the raging ball, the raging ball as well. Uh, it it or oh, it's rampage. Okay, rampage here. Okay, I, I I'm almost. Wait, just me see. Earn some more rage. So you can see the the AOE value of rampage. See, the. That's pretty good. Uh, when when you have to to kill some some mob, some ads, or even when you're dealing with uh, perhaps when you're dealing with uh, a comp where where you have two melees, uh, having whirlwind deal 200% damage and then uh, use bloodthirst or uh, or rampage or near them, that's a lot of damage. Uh, this one, I believe, even the proc, whirlwind doing 200% increased damage, just one whirlwind, is worth it uh, on a PvE scenario, on a single target scenario. Um, then we have a Berserker Rage, which causes enrage, and this, I could see this one being used on PvP as well, and why is that? Because when you, when you have enrage, uh, so you enrage and you you get you get uh, I mean you're getting CC'd and then you you enrage and you earn I, I believe uh, I'm sorry you use berserker rage when you're CC'd and it causes you to enrage which increase which increases uh, does it increase movement speed no it's just the attack speed so uh, it increases your attack speed uh, you get you you can nuke. You can deal some more damage while being uh, immune to, to those to fear, sap and the incapacitate effects. I could see Outburst being um, a talent of choice, but perhaps I would choose uh, Avatar or even... I don't know. It, it decreases damage for 10% and reduces all roots and snares. Um, I don't know, I'd probably for PvP I'd go with Avatar. Uh, because I, I would need to remove s roots and snares uh, most probably at least some slows I believe every class has a slow now um, every class has a slow but not all specs have a slow that's important to um, to explain but I, I would choose avatar probably for PvP I would choose it 
and PvE Wrecking Ball seems to be uh, the best choice. Oh yeah, and even Avatar for PvE, I believe. Uh, Fury Warrior is um, is also a, a spec to me that seems that um, that it deals a lot a lot of of damage on a, on a short on a short period of time uh, with with uh, rampage and then raging ball. So popping your avatar with with your battle cry. Uh, could seem to be a, a good um, good stack of cooldowns so probably Wrecking Ball or Avatar for single target, I don't know Wrecking Ball R Wrecking Ball surely when you have more than one target but Avatar or Wrecking Ball for a single target then there, there needs to be done some math which I, I don't have, I don't possess the resources to do so going on ahead, we have Furious Charge. Charge also increases the healing from your next Bloodthirst by 300%. Uh, uh, so Furious Charge along with Fresh... Uh, no, that's not... Fr what was it? Nah, I, I was doing... Then... So uh, next, yeah, the healing for the next waters by three hundred percent. So it's plus three, right? So instead of four health, four percent health, I would have um, not twelve. Is it twelve? Is it twelve or perhaps it's twelve? No, but uh, plus three hundred percent. That would mean sixteen percent of of the health. Well, could be it, it's good for for PvP, no doubt about it. But um, I'm not not really sure if it would be uh, worth it. Uh, it could be worth it even on PVE and PvP, PvP mostly, but PVE could be also worth it. Uh, Bonding stride reduces the cooldown of heroic whip by 15 seconds, and heroic in heroic whip now it also increases your run speed by 70% for three seconds. Uh, this is, this would be mostly used on PV PVE, I believe. On PVP, I'm not so sure about it uh, because you would need the, the extra healing, uh, even if you have a healer, I believe. Um, kind of conflicted that, uh, on that talent. Then we have uh, Warpoint. You now only take only 20% increased damage from Enrage and while you're Enrage normally you get 30% so it's less 10% uh, for PvP this would be the best I believe because the, your enemies will surely be focusing on you when you're enraged even though it is only 4 seconds but um, it's, it's extra damage that you'll take so I don't know. I'm conflicted for PvP. I'm conflicted between Furious Charge and War Paint. For PvE, depending if, if there are if there is a lot of AOE damage, I'll choose War Paint. If not, I'll choose Bonding Strive uh, for an extra extra mobility. And then with double time, you get increased increased uh, uh, rage uh, simply by uh, heroic, heroic whipping out and then charging in. So I would just probably bonding stride for now. Then we have uh, on the next side we have massacre uh, execute critical strikes to reduce the rage cost of your next rampage by a hundred percent. You would have to crit. So uh, going with battle cry that would be good, but it's only uh, below twenty percent that you can use your execute. So I don't know. I'm um, not really sure if it will be... I mean, you, you must crit, and now if you crit, then the Rampage could be good, uh, could be bad. Is it worth it uh, only using this talent for 20% of the fight? Um, let's see. Frothing Berserker. When you reach 100 Rage, your damage is increased by 100% and your movement speed by 30%. For six seconds. 
Well, this one is definitely not a PvP talent. And this one is kind of weird. Let's see the other. Uh, passive reduces the cost of rampage by 50 ra 15 rage passing on it only for 70 um, I don't know I don't know they're, they're all they, they lack something I think I think they lack something uh, massacre could be good for PvE definitely not for PvP you should not be specking for something uh, that it, it is only played uh, at 20%, especially when you have, when you are being countered, slow at CC, whatever. So, this one is a PvP only, PV only talent to me. I, 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 I won't choose it for PvP, not even on, on Battlegrounds. It's, I'm, I'm not seeing the use of it. Uh, when you reach 100 rage, your damage is increased by 100% and your movement speed by uh, 30 percent uh, this could be uh, good for pvp although i'm not really seeing the, i mean you must be at 100 rage but when you are uh, at 100 rage you should spend uh, all, all of your i mean only only rampage deals uh, damage but uh, uh, I'm sorry, only Rampage uh, consumes Rage, but then again, you would have to uh, be uh, next to your target with 100 Rage, uh, your movement speed would be increased, you, you would pop up all of your stuff. I'm, I'm seeing this one as a PV, PvP talent, not PvP, not PvE. Uh, and Carnage as a definitely as a as a pv uh, as a pv talent but also a pvp talent to use carnage more often mm, kind of conflicted here i like the idea to reach ra uh, 100 rage but oh it's six seconds oh this this changes something so uh, can I reach uh, 100 rage? Let's, let's just see if I can. Oh yeah. Oh, th this one seems this one seems good. Um. This one seems good. Um, this one seems good for PvP and PV as well, because then you would. Uh, it's for six seconds, so. Uh, I don't know. This one is this. What just me answer to this guy? Okay, he he knows he knows where uh, he knows where it, where it where it where the void storage is. Okay, so continuing, uh, frothing berserker uh, can be used on um, PVE. I I I I, will, I I like the idea. I prefer this one for PV for both PVE and PVP. Uh, it it gives you increased movement speed and damage. Is ten percent damage is kind of neglectable. But then you reach 100, 100 rage, and then you just pop your uh, rampage and go on. I'll choose this one for both PVE and PVP. Um, massacre? Nah, I don't. I don't like it. It's only. It's only on 20% of the fights for PVE and PVP. That's. That's not worth it. Um, all right. So next we have bloodbath. For 10 seconds, your melee attacks and abilities cause the target to bleed for 40% additional damage. It has a 30 second cooldown and it's only uh, for 10 seconds so for 10 seconds this i can see the, uh, let, let's just see the others fury slash increases your haste by five percent for 10 seconds stacking up to 10 times uh, to three times oh this one is good uh more haste 
And let's see this one. The inner rage, raging wall, no longer requires same rage and deals a hundred and fifty percent increased damage, but has a four and a half second cooldown. Um, I'll choose this one for PvP simply because uh, it has a cooldown and it it deals a lot more damage, and then you'll just spam Fury Slash and uh, to get the Bloodthirst. So this one PvP and that's it. And then for PvE, I'm not really sure what what I should do. 15% uh, haste uh, is kind of good, and it's always up. That's for sure. It would always be up. But then Bloodbath for 10 seconds, your melee attacks and abilities cause the target to bleed for 40% additional damage. And how would you use um, this one? So this one, you here's what you'll do. You need to stack everything, right? It's it it has a it has a 30 second cooldown. So that's that's quite quite short, right? All right. Let let's see the. Um, you need to proc everything. Need to get that. Okay. So here it goes. You see the bloodbath because because you 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 had all all of that stacked up together and then you see you're building up again. You see, and and on the next on the next build you will have. Uh, the bloodbath again to deal uh, to deal the same the same the same rotation as I did as I did before. So I like I like how this plays out. Uh, and friends is just the passive. Uh, you'll just get increased haste, and that's it. I I prefer bloodbath for PVE. Uh, friends is just uh, I don't know. It's just taste. While Bloodbath, you deal a lot more damage while enraged uh, on top with the frost, Frothing Berserker. Even if you, I, I didn't, I didn't even let uh, let it reach 100 rage. But if I had, then it would be on top of uh, uh, another 10% of increased damage. So this one for PvP, PvE, uh, and even and even for. Against against AOE, you'll get uh, all, all your target. The whirlwind will get uh, the, all the all the targets bleeding. So, and in rage for PVP because uh, it, it, it deals more damage. No longer requires to be in rage, but as a for for a four and a half seconds cooldown, which it, to my to my opinion it is accept, uh, acceptable. Then we have Blade Storm, which. Um, for PvP, I would uh, probably enjoy not because of the damage, but because you are immune to movement impairing and loss of control effects. Uh, that's I I don't like White Star very much uh, as as it is now on on the Warrior. Um, it was better before. Now. No, I don't think it is so so great. Then we have Reckless Abandon, which uh, so Battle Cry, your ability which grants you 100% increased critical strike, uh, now grants 100 rage, and you can. This is definitely the PvP talent where you get, um, and it works very. It goes very well with Frothing Berserker uh, on a one minute cooldown. So. Uh, uh, this one for PvP is the best, I mean, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, so then we have, and then last we have, we have Dragon Hauer, which uh, Hauer explosively dealing 8500 damage to all enemies within 8 yards and decreasing, and decreasing all damage you deal by 20% for 6 seconds. Dragon Hover ignores all armor and always critically strikes. Um, mm, mm, mm. 
this one can go on top of all of the of that rage and and, and that you that you are carefully preparing um, so this on top of all of that let's just see if I can demonstrate what it can be done in PvE and it, it's it uh, everything has uh, lower uh, low, uh, low cooldowns short short cooldowns I'm sorry all right so let's see what I can do that's probably it right um, I believe that's not quite of a big deal but uh, that's probably how you would align all, all of your abilities together uh, along with Dragon Horror, uh, Bloodbath and Battlecry. This, this is for PvE. For PvP, I'm not sure if uh, Battlecry generating 100 rage would be best. And why is that? Because it would proc Frothing Berserker giving you uh, an extra movement speed and, dam and increased damage. Uh, on as as you wish, uh, I mean, on a, on your command, uh, that that would be nice. But um, Dragon Roar uh, for PV, PV, PvP, I'm sorry, could also be uh, extremely good, especially because it always crits. So that's uh, that's not that's not much much. It, it is uh, 15, 16, uh, 16, 000 damage. That that's not a lot. Uh, or seventeen thousand damage. That's not a lot, but it increases the damage you deal by twenty seconds, and you would have to time this very carefully uh, to get that the maximum damage in input. So uh, reckless abandon or dragon roar for PvP. There's also Dragon Roar is definitely the, the way to go for PvE uh, on on PvE encounters. So um, that's that's it for um, for this uh, for this review of the Fury Warrior. Uh, it was the first time that I that I played with it, and but I, I think I analyzed it uh, quite well actually. Uh, I thought it could be uh, a lot harder to to get a, a hand on it. So, um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you around. See you later.